Joining us now uh, for more on this is Tom Vassos. He is a professor with the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management. Uh, Mr. Vassos, first, what do you make of these numbers? What does it say about our manufacturing jobs, do you think? Well, I think uh, manufacturing was the hardest hit, so f uh, quite, a, quite a few, 26,000 manufacturing jobs lost. Uh, so it's not great from that front, uh, a lot of those in Quebec as well. But if you dig under the numbers, uh, another troubling trend is the fact that although uh, we only lost net 7,000 jobs, we actually lost 48,000 full-time jobs. Uh, we gained uh, 40,000 part-time jobs and we gain mm. 37,000 uh, you know jobs that are basically self-employment jobs so uh, it, it's it's a little worrisome from that perspective. Yeah when you look deeper certainly yeah. um, was there a, a province or a region that was especially harder hit? Yeah Ontario was quite uh, quite hard hit 56,000 full-time jobs lost so that was uh, really hurt badly so both Toronto and Ontario now have unemployment of 9.6 percent which is basically the worst province uh, in the country other than PEI and Newfoundland. Uh, you compare that to uh, out west Alberta at about 6.5 percent and the Prairie Provinces at about 4 or 5 percent. So, so we're, we're uh, hurting right now. Okay, and speaking of manufacturing, it's a different situation in uh, China. I know you just got back from a trip and, and what insight did you gain there? Yeah, I mean it's amazing what's going on over there and the types of products and things like that. If you take a look, for example, this small uh, USB storage device that holds 512 gigabytes and some people might not know how much that is, but it's enough to store about two million photographs all for the high price of about uh, sixteen dollars so I mean the price of these things are coming down uh, yeah. this pen that I bought for uh, eighteen dollars kind of interesting you might think I overpaid for it but it's actually a full-blown video camera and in fact it has video audio and then when I take it apart here this USB two gigabytes of storage slips wow. into the computer have you tried that one out? <laughs> yes, I have I'm video <laughs> videotaping you right now oh geez okay <laughs> And so it's interesting because now you're seeing, of course, low wages in countries like that. It's very difficult for Canada to, co to compete in the manufacturing sector against those low-wage countries. And therefore, we really have to look at what the Martin Prosperity Institute is telling us to do is really move upstream to those creative industry, the creative jobs, creative skills that are needed. Yeah, the knowledge economy, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Primarily but university degrees, etc. So we've got to encourage our young people to, to get those one or two degrees and really uh, go after some of those higher paying jobs. But, you know, speaking of China, many people say that we're going to start to see a recovery, a turnaround as China, you know, requires more of our natural resources to fuel their growth. What are we seeing on that end? Well, the, the resource sector hasn't turned around right yet, right uh, now, but if you look at the forecast, it's it's still not great if we compare ourselves to China. So this year the forecast is a, a drop in GDP in Canada of 3% versus 7.2% increase in, in China. Or if you look at it next year, we're, we're looking at an increase in GDP in Canada of 1.6%. In China, they're looking at almost 12%, uh, 11 or 12%. So there's quite a difference between the growth rates they're expecting there compared to Canada. Obviously, uh, we'll be watching the numbers. And you might want to leave behind the, the, uh, the camera pen. We okay. might want to check that out. Tom Vassos with the Rotman School of Management jo joining us. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Jacqueline.